Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Boy, this is a great group of people. Thank you. What a great crowd. Wow, look at this. In nine days, we are going to win the state of Colorado, and we are going to win back the White House. We are. And I must tell you, uh, if your ballots, you got to get the ballots in. Who has sent their ballots in? Now, do you think those ballots are properly counted? Do you think? So when you send them in, do you think they're properly counted? Right. You can check on your ballot to make sure it's counted properly. I know they're all saying, oh, of course, everything is so legitimate, everything is so. Perhaps I'm a more skeptical person, okay? Nobody's upset with that, right? I saw Obama saying the foundations of our country are based on this. But eight years ago, when he was running, he was saying that it was crooked as hell in Chicago, right? Just like he said, Obamacare is wonderful. <laughs> keep your plan, keep your doctor, right? So you can, uh, you can get a ballot if you need it tomorrow. It slows today. But you can get a ballot tomorrow at University Center, and you can put your ballot in. But so important, we are on the threshold of something so incredible. It's so incredible, so exciting. But you got to get those ballots. So you can go to University Center, and they'll give you a ballot, a new ballot. They'll void your old ballot. They'll give you a new ballot. And you can go out and make sure it gets in. Now, in some places, they probably do that four or five times, but we don't do that. But uh, that's great. So by tomorrow, hopefully, almost everybody will have their ballots in. We're on the cusp of an incredible historic change that's going to transfer power from a failed political establishment, and it looks like it's failing pretty big right now, and return the power to our families, communities, and citizens. So the early voting is underway. Get those ballots in. Real change begins with immediately repealing and replacing Obamacare. What a mess. It's just been announced that the citizens of Colorado are going to experience a massive double-digit hike in their Obamacare premiums next year. Now, I know what it is, but I want everybody to have a good time, so I refuse to tell you because I don't want to ruin your evening. And by the way, this crowd, there are thousands of people outside, and you have the Denver Broncos. Your team is playing right now. You know, when I came over, I said, isn't Denver playing right now? And they said, yes. I said, do we have people? They said, Mr. Trump, this thing, you could have sold it out three different times. So that's great. Should we do a little shorter version so you can go home and watch football? No. I love you, too. I don't know if you know, the NFL is way down in their ratings. And you know why? Two reasons. Number one is this politics, they're finding, is a much rougher game than football and more exciting. And it's honestly, we've taken a lot of people away from the NFL. And the other reason is Kaepernick. Kaepernick. And that's fine. But elect me and we will stop the horrible hikes that you're seeing with Obamacare. We will stop the Obamacare madness. 90% of Colorado counties are losing insurers next year as a result of Obamacare. Some of you are going to have one person, one group to deal with. That's not good. Good luck in the negotiation. In Minnesota, where the premium increase will be close to 60%, the Democratic governor has said the Affordable Care Act is no longer affordable. Hillary Clinton wants to double down on Obamacare, make it even more expensive. In fact, much more expensive. She also wants to raise your taxes through the roof, by the way. Lots of luck. Like, like taxes aren't high enough for the people of this country. I'm asking for your vote so we can replace Obamacare and save health care for every family in Colorado and in the country. 
and in the country. Real change also means restoring honesty to our government. My contract with the American voter begins with a plan to end government corruption. Our plan, our plan, includes a constitutional amendment to impose term limits on all members of Congress. I will impose a lifetime ban on foreign lobbyists raising money for American elections. I don't want to have them raising money. Who knew they could even do that? Then you wonder why we're making bad deal with, you know, we make all these horrible deals with other countries. People say, I wonder why. Well, take a look at that. So we will impose a ban, permanent ban on that. I want the entire corrupt Washington establishment to hear and to heed our words, okay? Our words, our. When we win on November 8th, we are going to Washington, D.C., and we are going to drain the swamp. We are. We are. We all know about Hillary's mounting legal troubles that she's brought onto herself with her willful and deliberate criminal misconduct. Hillary Clinton is not the victim, by the way. She's not the victim. You, the American people, are the victims of this corrupt system in every way. And this is your last chance to change it. I really believe this. This is your last election where you're going to have a chance. And if we don't win between Supreme Court justices and all of the other things that are going to be so important, it will be very, very sad. Very, very sad. I think most of the people in this room believe that this will be your last chance to win. And not going to happen again. And by the way, we're leading in so many polls. We're leading by four points in Florida. Of all people, the New York Times just put us at four points up in Florida, and that's low. They have lines in Florida, early voting, that are stretching four and five blocks. They never had lines before. People walk in, they vote. We're leading in Iowa. We're leading, we're leading in North Carolina. We're leading in the great state of Ohio, big league. We're leading all over the place. And we're leading numerous national polls. And those polls are all before the bombshell of corruption that was additionally exposed or exposed for a second time on Friday. So this was all, this was all before the big bombshell, these polls came out. So I don't know what that's going to mean. I can tell you, I wouldn't be voting for her. We could speak for days, for weeks, months, about Hillary's many crimes against this country and its people and her efforts to conceal those crimes by destroying 33,000 emails. You know, I'll be honest. I think that Washington, D.C. sees these rallies we have, the biggest ever. It's one of the great movements of all time. Even the very dishonest media, the world's most dishonest people. They say it. They say it. It's considered one of the great political phenomena. And I will tell you, but uh, to me, if we don't get there, if we don't win on November 8th, I don't consider it. A couple of them have said, doesn't matter. What you've done will go down in the history books. I said, maybe for you, not for me. I've spent tremendous hours and energy and tremendous amounts of money, as you know. I think I'll be in for, could be over $100 million, which is nice because that's $100 million we don't collect from donors and special interests. Where we have had, we've had tremendous support. But where we have had the best support, in all fairness, is the small donor. The $61, I think it averages something like $61.
No Republican has ever been able to do that. But to me, it's an honor. Now, I'll tell you, if we lose, I will say, it was the greatest waste of time, energy, and money of my lifetime. Okay? Forget, forget going down in the history book. We're going to win. I think we're going to win. And I think... I think when you read... When you read WikiLeaks, when you see that Podesta... I'll tell you what, I would fire him so fast. He speaks so badly about her. She's got bad instincts. She, oh, I won't even say it. He says things about her that I won't say about her. Do you believe it? I would fire John Podesta so fast, whoever he is. I don't think I ever met the guy. But he says such bad things about her. And others say such bad things. It's amazing what you learn from from looking. I'll tell you what, if she never heard the word email, do you think she'd be a very happy woman today? Now, it was just learned, by the way, that they found 650,000 emails on the current investigation of somebody else. You know, in the diamond business and the coal business. It's coal, don't worry, we're putting your miners back to work. Clean coal, clean coal. They call, this could be the mother load. You know? This could be the 33,000 that are missing. This could be the 20,000 that are missing. This could be the 15,000 that are missing. Three weeks ago, they're missing a big box of emails. Think of it, 650,000. What do you have to do to do 650? Just if you sat and did like this, one, two, three, you'd be there for weeks. How can you have 650,000 emails? Anyway, they have 650,000 that they found. It was just reported. I would think they have some real bad ones, but we're going to find out. Look, hey, maybe not. Maybe not. No doubt in the next nine days, Hillary and her special interests will say and do something to detract from her crime and to distract, and also to distract from the issues facing our country. As the Obama campaign once said, Hillary will say anything and change nothing. Now, you know who said that about her, right? That was President Obama. And you remember, you know, she's supposed to be, oh, it's everything's so nice, they're hugging and they're kissing. And, and by the way, President Obama should not be focused on Hillary Clinton getting elected. He should be focused on bringing your jobs back, on beating ISIS. And for years, I've heard the nastiest quote. It was a quote that if you can't control your own house, you have no right, essentially, to be in the White House, right? And I said, what a nasty quote. I would never say that quote. I would be so badly criticized for that. And then I found out three days ago, Michelle Obama was the one that said it about Hillary when they ran against Hillary. And then, oh, you saw this with Biden. You know, tough guy. He's a tough guy. He's so tough that he's doing a great job in defeating ISIS, isn't he? He's doing a great job in negotiating the Iran deal, right? They laugh at us. But he, he called me to the back of the gym. I dream about that. I dream, I dream of that. Oh. But, you know what I do like this, watch, watch. And he's down, he's down. He would go down so fast. But somebody said something today that was very interesting. They said, you know, he made that statement, I'd like to take him to the back of the gym. I wish he talked that way to ISIS, right? So I'd like to take him to the back of the gym. And somebody said, and they, you know the announcers, these crooked people back here, they're disgusting. No, they were all saying, oh, what a wonderful statement. Oh, it was so wonderful the way he said that. Oh, isn't that great? Now, if I would have said, 
I'd like to take Biden to the back of the gym. They'd say, he's a bully. He's a mean, mean, horrible man, right? He's a horrible man. But with Biden, they thought it was so nice. One person even said, that was so cute. Oh, boy. Folks, we better win on November 8th. We better win. <laughs> Got to get rid of this crew. You know, Hillary said that she was going to make him Secretary of State. Now he turned it down. He's ex the guy's exhausted. But he's, he's almost as tired as she is, but not quite. But she said he was going to be Secretary of State. So they called, do you have a comment? I said, yeah. These are the guys that have been raising taxes. These are the guys that came up with Obamacare. These are the guys that can't beat ISIS. These are the guys that are letting drugs pour into our country. We have no borders. We have no anything. Murder rate is the highest it's been in 45 years. Who the hell wants him as Secretary of State? These people are there. We want to have fresh, strong, smart, tough people, but people with heart. We want people with heart. In any, I will continue to address and expose the criminal corruption of Hillary Clinton and its threat to the survival of our democracy. But I also want to spend these next nine days with the wonderful people of this country talking about my vision for making America great again. And let's talk positive. Let's talk positive. I'm starting to think we'll go positive because, you know, it's all, you know, bad borders, our military is depleted, everything. Let's talk about fixing our military, fixing our border. We're going to talk positive. At the core of my contract is my plan to bring back jobs. Right now, 70 million American women and children live in poverty or near the brink of poverty. 43% of African-American school-aged children live in poverty. 34% of Hispanic school-aged children live in poverty. There are 40,000 homeless veterans, our great people. Do we have any veterans in the audience? Yeah, a lot. 40,000 homeless. Yet we spend hundreds of billions of dollars providing benefits to illegal immigrants. We take care, in many cases, of illegal immigrants, more so than we take care of our great veterans that let us be here. We have a story. There was a story over the weekend. You probably saw it. A veteran, he lives out of a dumpster. He gets his food from a dumpster. And he was a great veteran, a brave veteran. And he lives out of a dumpster. We're not going to have that, folks. We're not going to have it. And Hillary Clinton said, the Veterans Administration is doing just fine. It's not. People are waiting in line for two weeks before they could even. People are dying waiting in line for a simple prescription or procedure. It's terrible. So we're going to take care of our veterans, and the veterans know it. And we are overwhelming. Uh, they do polls of the veterans. We are overwhelming, and we're going to follow through, unlike these politicians for so many years. Hillary's refugee plan would cost $400 billion. That's enough to rebuild the inner cities of America. It's time to put America first. As your president, I will go into the poorest communities and work on a national plan for revitalization. We will replace decades of failure with generations of success. We will bring prosperity to our poorest communities and neighborhoods, safety to our most dangerous areas, and hope to those places which have not known hope in a very, very long time. And to the African-American community that lives, so many, in these inner cities, we're going to help. It's unsafe. You can't walk to the store and get a loaf of bread. You get shot. It's unsafe. The education's no good. And there are no jobs. And I always say it. I say, give me a chance. What do you have to lose? Give me a chance. The Democrats have been running this thing for up to 100 years, uninterrupted. And all they do is they want your vote, 
They want your vote, and then they'll say, thanks a lot, see you in four years. They don't do a damn thing. So to the African Americans out there that are watching on television and in the room, I say, give me a chance. I will not disappoint you. America has lost, thank you, one-third of its manufacturing jobs since Bill Clinton signed NAFTA. By the way, the worst trade bill ever signed in history. America has lost, listen to this, 70,000 factories since China entered the World Trade Organization under the Bill and Hillary-backed disaster. Colorado lost more than 100,000 manufacturing jobs since Clinton's NAFTA and China's trade deals went into effect. We're living through the single greatest jobs theft in the history of the world. What the world has done to us because of stupid, corrupt politicians. What the world has done to us. A Trump administration will stop another disaster which will come about if I'm not president. The Trans-Pacific Partnership. Renegotiate NAFTA, we have to, and we are going to stand up to China on its currency manipulation. And I've done so much business with China. We're going to be fine with China. Problem with China, they have no respect for our country. They have no respect for our president. They'll respect us again. In the meantime, they're building a massive fortress in the middle of the South China Sea. So they take our money, they take our jobs, they make everything for us. We bring it in, no tax, no nothing. And yet it's almost impossible for us to do business over there. I don't know if you know, it's not a, it's not a two list guy, this big guy with a cowboy hat, right? Nah, big good looking guy. And I like him, you know why? He's a serious supporter, right? My guy. But it's like a one-way street, whether it's China, Mexico. It's just, boom, everything goes in. They get everything, we get nothing. We get unemployment. We get closed factories. It's going to stop. And it's so easy. It's so easy. Because your politicians have never told you what to do. When they leave and they fire everybody and they go to, let's say, Mexico, they make their air conditioners or their cars or whatever they make, and we charge them now nothing. So they make them, they send them. But we have unemployment and closed factories. Now, when I tell them before they leave, listen, folks, please don't leave. They'll say, no, sir, we're leaving. I say, well, here's the story. You want to leave, you want to play cool. So you go ahead and leave. Enjoy your factory in Mexico. It's a little hot, but that's okay. Don't worry, you'll get used to it. But every time you make an air conditioning unit carrier who left Indianapolis, Every time you make an air conditioning unit and you think you're going to sell it into our country tax-free, not going to happen anymore. No more. 35% tax. 35% tax. And you know what's going to happen? When they hear that, they're not leaving, folks. And for the few companies that might want to take a chance, that's okay. We're going to make a lot of money, okay? It's okay. Do you agree with that, right? You know how many companies we've lost? We're losing all these companies. As we're standing here today, you have people, the leaders of your companies, negotiating to leave Colorado and to leave Ohio and to leave Pennsylvania and North Carolina and Wyoming. Oh, those Wyoming. Wyoming is going to love me. They love a thing called clean coal in Wyoming, right? Wyoming. Great place. Tell your friends in Wyoming the miners go back to work, okay? Will you do that? All right, tell them. The miners are going back to work in Wyoming and in West Virginia and in Ohio. And by the way, the steel workers too. We're going to lower taxes on American business from 35% to 15%. We're going to cut taxes for the middle class families by hundreds of billions of dollars a year. Middle-class families have been hurt so badly, like the forgotten people. They're like the forgotten people, not anymore. And we'll end the war on American energy. Hillary Clinton has said, by the time we get through all of my conditions, 
I do not think there will be any places in America where fracking will continue to take place. I mean, fracking is actually not as new as people think, but essentially it's a new technology. And it's had an unbelievable impact. And we have under our feet so much wealth. Don't forget, we have $20 trillion. We've got to pay it off. And we have so much wealth. And we want, and you know, environmentally, I've received many environmental awards, but I want crystal clear, crystal clean water, right? I want such clean air. I want that air to be clean. And I want safety. Other than that, folks, that's what I want. We want water, we want air, and we want safety. You see this new, this new pact that Obama made where we're paying billions and billions and billions of dollars. And I don't think they have any idea where it's even going, global warming pact. And all it does is make it impossible for our businesses to compete. So we'll make a couple of little changes when we get in. <laughs> Hillary Clinton also wants to put your miners out of work. My administration will put the miners back to work, and we will unleash the power of clean coal, oil, natural gas, and shale energy. <laughs> we will become a rich nation once again. But to be a rich nation, we must also be a safe nation. Hillary wants a 550% increase in Syrian refugees over and above the thousands that are already coming in under Obama. When I'm elected president, we will suspend the Syrian refugee program, and we will keep radical Islamic terrorists the hell out of our country. Sorry. Sorry. A Trump administration will also secure and defend the borders of the United States. And yes, we will build a wall. And yes, Mexico will pay for the wall. They will pay for the wall. Crooked Hillary has pledged Open borders, which means there goes your country. And she supports sanctuary cities. No longer, folks. But she wants open borders. You saw that during the debate. WikiLeaks got her again. She never talked open borders. She wants open borders. We could have 600 million people pour into our country. Think of it. Once you have open borders like that, you don't have a country anymore. Countless Americans are killed by illegal immigrants because our government won't do its job. Here in Colorado, detective who you know, Donnie Young, and detective John Bishop were providing security at a baptism when they were ambushed by an illegal immigrant who had multiple prior run-ins with law enforcement, a very bad actor. The illegal immigrant shot and killed Detective Young and wounded Detective Bishop. The perpetrator was a known gang member and a person that people that knew him begged, begged, get him out of our country or incarcerate him. But it was too late. Also, here in Colorado, Patricia Gunthorpe and Deborah Sarecki, along with a small toddler, were killed by an illegal immigrant who had been arrested 16 times by seven different police departments throughout the state of Colorado. When I become president, this crime wave will end, and it will end very quickly. It ends very quickly. You ought to go take a look at the Remembrance Project. These are people whose children and sisters and brothers and Everybody, I'm just so sad to see. I've gotten very friendly with a lot of them. They're unbelievable. In the most cases, parents where young, young children were killed. So many of them, so many of them. We will end illegal immigration, deport all criminal illegal immigrants, and save American lives. We will save American lives. Under Hillary Clinton, when she was Secretary of State, when they caught an illegal criminal, illegal criminal, could be a murderer, could be a drug pusher, could be a 
bad gang member, they would bring them back to their country, and their country, very smart, would say, we don't want them. Don't, we're not taking them back. So they'd bring them back into the United States because they'd call her and they'd say, uh, meaning her people, bring them back. Bring them back. We don't want them. So they're now all over our country. I guarantee you, whether it's four years or eight years, that won't happen one time. When we bring them back, they take them. We'll also repeal the Obama-Clinton defense sequester and rebuild our badly depleted military. In addition to General Flynn, we have the endorsements. How good is General Flynn? Is he good? We have the endorsements of over 200 admirals and generals and 22 Medal of Honor recipients. Great people. Gotten to know a lot of them. Our Air Force is the smallest and oldest that it's ever been. It's the smallest and oldest. We will rebuild our Air Force with new modern planes. And we will also invest in the space technology and crucial work being done at Buckley Air Force Base. We'll step it up. We also need a new foreign policy that puts America first, finally. Hillary brought disaster to Iraq, Syria, Libya. She empowered Iran, and she unleashed ISIS in the vacuum, in the vacuum. Hillary failed our Washington. I mean, if you take a look, our Washington establishment has failed. They've spent $6 trillion on wars in the Middle East, and now, the Middle East, as far as we're concerned, and as far as humanity is concerned, is just, it's in far worse shape than it's ever been. You go back 15 years ago, there was nothing like this. So we spent $6 trillion. We could have rebuilt our country two or three times over. And the Middle East is in far worse shape and far more dangerous. We have the great migration, all of the problems. Look at what's happening to Germany. Look at what's happening to France, Paris, Nice. Six trillion dollars, and we're in much worse shape. Think of it. Could have rebuilt our country. They've dragged us into foreign wars that have made us less safe and that we don't win. They have left our borders wide open at home, and they've shipped our jobs and wealth to other countries. To all Americans, I say it is time now, finally, for new leadership. Hillary wants to raise your taxes to almost 50%. I'm lowering your taxes bigly. My contract calls for the biggest tax cut since Ronald Reagan. Hillary opposes school choice and wants federal bureaucrats to make education choices instead of parents. My contract guarantees school choice and puts a rapid end to Common Core. We're bringing our education local. <laughs> Hillary Clinton oversaw massive cuts to the military budget and said the problems at the VA are not widespread. 22 suicides a day. Nobody even believes that number. 22. There were two numbers I couldn't believe. When I hear 70,000 factories gone, I never — it doesn't sound like it's possible. 70,000. And the other one, I can't believe, 22 suicides a day of vets. And a lot of that is because of lack of service, lack of whatever it takes, lack of care, lack of care. My contract reverses the defense cuts, rebuilds our military when we need it almost as badly as ever before, and gives veterans the right to see the doctor of their choice. <laughs> Hillary Clinton attacks the integrity of police officers. She attacks the integrity of police officers. My contract calls for funding, training, and supporting the incredible men and women of law enforcement. 
Hillary Clinton wants to release more violent offenders from prison and, frankly, from other countries as they illegally enter. My contract calls for a national plan to reduce violent crime and treats safety as a civil right. Our murder rate is the highest it's been in 45 years. Hillary wants to effectively abolish the Second Amendment. I was endorsed. Oh, that's right. That's right. The response in Colorado, that's a bigger response than I usually get. That's a big response. So I got, I got the earliest endorsement ever from the National Rifle Association, the NRA. We're going to save your Second Amendment. We are going to save your Second Amendment. You don't have to worry about it. My contract calls for saving the Second Amendment and protecting the right to keep and bear arms. Very important. Hillary wants immediate amnesty, open borders, and virtually unlimited immigration from the most dangerous regions in the world. My plan ends illegal immigration and suspends immigration from terror-prone regions. Now, I have to tell you, we're going to have the wall. We need it. We're going to have the strong border. But we're going to have big, beautiful doors in the wall. And people are going to come into our country, and they're going to be proud to come in. And they're going to come in on merit. We're going to also take people on merit. People that can help us grow the country. Great people. But I just want to let you know, people will enter and come into our country. People that you'll love and people that will love you. But they will come in to our country legally. Okay? And we're going to speed up the process. We're going to very, very strongly speed up the process because it's forever. And it's very unfair, you know, when you have people that are in line for 10 years, can't get in, and then you have somebody crosses the border and you're supposed to do that. Who's that? Oh, you know what I'm talking about, Father, right? I love Father. What is your name, Father? Father Andre. Does anyone know Father Andre? I've heard about Father Andre. Thank you, Father Andre. So we want to speed up that process and make it a fair process. Hillary wants radical judges who will impose their personal opinions from the bench. My contract calls for the appointment of judges who uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States. And those are your federal judges, but justices also of the Supreme Court of the United States. Great, great people we're going to appoint, and great intellect. Hillary wants to go even further than Obama on illegal executive actions. I will terminate every single illegal Obama executive order and will restore the constitutional law. I will restore the constitutional law to this country. Finally, Hillary wants us to think small, wants us to believe things can't change, and wants our lives to revolve around Washington, D.C. I am asking you to dream big, to push for bold change, and to believe in a movement powered by the people and by their love of our country. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any place better to be than a Trump rally in Albany? Right? No place. And even with your Broncos playing, this is really good. And John Elway is a very good guy, by the way. I played golf with John Elway quite a while ago. I want to tell you something, in case you didn't know it. Oh, it's a mosquito. I never liked mosquitoes. I like them even less now. But I played golf with John Elway, and I will tell you something you will not be surprised at. He hits the hell out of the ball. He is long. 
He's got a thing called club head speed. But who would be surprised at that? But he's a great guy. He's done a great job. I've been very lucky. I've led a great life. Now I want to give back to the country, which has been so good to me. I've spent a career finding the untapped potential in projects and in people. Everywhere I look in this country, all I see is untapped potential waiting to be set free. I'm tired of politicians telling Americans to defer their dreams to another day when they really mean to another decade. America is tired of waiting. The moment is now. It's not going to happen again. All we have to do is stop believing in our failed politicians and start believing in each other and in our country, which is so amazing. There is no challenge too great, no dream outside of our reach. Don't let anyone tell you it can't be done. It can. And I know it so well. And don't forget, I spent my life on the other side. I was an insider. I was maybe the ultimate insider. I know them. I understand the game. But I also looked across and I said, our country is dying. We can't continue to lose almost $800 billion a year on bad trade deals that are there because of political interests, because of donors and special interests, because of campaign contributions. They don't care about the country. But we can't continue to make deals like that horrible Iran deal where we give them $150 billion back. Or where we give them $1.7 billion in cash. In cash. And then they humiliate us by taking our 10 sailors and all sorts. And they would have kept them, except that the money started pouring in two days later. So I saw what was happening, and I said, I love our country too much. Not that this is easy. I could be home very much enjoying watching the Denver game. I could be very much enjoying myself sitting in New York or Florida or wherever I'm sitting watching uh, the Denver game, right, as an example. But we had to do this. And again, and I say it once more, it, there has never been in this country Bill O'Reilly, smart guy, tough guy, he said the single greatest political phenomena that he's witnessed in his lifetime. We don't want to blow it on November 8th. We don't want to blow it. Get out and vote. The future lies with the dreamers, not the cynics and the critics. Hillary has been there for 30 years, and she has accomplished nothing. She's just made things worse. She's the candidate of yesterday. We're the movement of the future. We are. Our movement represents all Americans from all backgrounds and all walks of life. We are asking for the votes of Republicans, Democrats, independents, and first-time voters. We're asking for the vote of every American who believes truth and justice, not money and power, should rule the day. We are fighting for every citizen who believes that government should serve the people, not the donors and not the special interests. We are fighting to unlock the potential of every American community and every American family who hope and pray and yearn for a better future. With your vote, and we are just nine days away from the change you've been waiting for your entire life. We will win. Together, we will make America wealthy again. We will make America strong again. We will make America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Colorado. God bless you, everybody. God bless you. Get out and vote. Get those ballots in. University Center tomorrow. Thank you.